Do you have a sales page and you're wondering, why is this thing not working? <laughs> like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Maybe you're not getting sales or you're in the midst of making a sales page or dreading making one and putting it off. And you think, what the heck's supposed to go on this thing anyway? You're just desperately looking at everybody else's sales page. Well, you're in luck because this is my specialty and I'm going to talk you through some of the basics of auditing or planning a sales page today per my 20 years experience. Uh, by the way, my name is Sarah Gio or Sarah G and you can find me over at saradesign.com, Sarah with an H or on Instagram at Sarah Design Agency and branding and positioning and funnels and sales pages. Those are my jam. So you're in the right place. All right. So you're auditing your sales page or you're planning it out. Let's start at the top. The top section of the sales page has a couple names. If you want to know the lexicon, it sometimes is called the hero, which is great because I talk about hero's journey all the time. <laughs> it also can be called a marquee or just a module, like module one. You can think of your sales page as being a bunch of rectangles stacked on top of one another. And those are sometimes called modules. So if we're in that hero banner, that module one, the most important part of the page, which is why some people save this for the last to write, is the impact statement. And that is that sentence or phrase or headline and subheadline that encapsulates what this thing is solving and for whom so that your audience, your ideal client comes there and says, oh my God, she made this page just for me. She's reading my mind. What the heck? Quick, quick, scroll, scroll by. <laughs> they have practically already decided to purchase if you've written your impact statement well, or at the very least, there are intrigued enough to read more. So what else goes down the page? I made a little list so I wouldn't forget. All right, so under that, we're heading down into module two. This is generally where I start talking about the transformation. I might have a couple bullet points, you know, like three things that it's gonna help you overcome or transform or change, or it might be more of a paragraph format, maybe with a pretty visual. But the idea here as you're going down the page after your impact statement is you're giving people a little bit of a peek at how they or their lives or their issues or whatever are going to be transformed by going through your course. So you can think of your course or your program as taking someone from point A to point B. And this is the peak at the point B for them. Like, hey, you know, there's a dreamy future here for you. There's potential. We have some hope, <laughs> some excitement about what could be coming for you. And let me talk about that a little bit. And maybe it's bullet points or some imagery or some icons to help get that across. And then heading into module three or thereabouts, as we're continuing down the page, we're going to start digging into the benefits. And some benefits were also in that transformative statement. And they were also in the impact statement. But it's important to know that benefits come before features. Benefits are at the top, features are at the bottom. And the difference between benefits and features is, you know, a feature is something like you get two coaching calls a month in our private community. A benefit is more like if you look at all the, the list of your features and tell people the so that you can or the because or the why of each of those things, like dig deeper on what that's going to do for them. Like, take bullet point one of two coaching calls a month and be like, why would people need that? What's the benefit of them having that? And that might be something like, um, stay on, well, I'll help you stay on track and accountable as you continue through this process and you won't get blocked, unable to move forward because you will be able to access me, your instructor and your community with questions as they happen and you can solve them and you can keep moving towards your goals. So that's the kind of thing you wanna talk about in your benefits, of course, in a clever and fun way and which pulls in your personality. Then further down the pages, when you get into those features, you know, number of videos and how long they are, calls, community, 
swipe files, if there's some included in-person event, that kind of stuff, that's gonna be further down your page. And bonuses. Now, if you're thinking about creating bonuses for your course or to get people to buy, and sometimes these are limited time bonuses, um, make sure that they are super tied to helping the person achieve the goals of the program. It shouldn't be some random thing like free iPad. It should be <laughs> it, more about something that's going to just make some parts of the experience a little bit faster and easier for them to do. And don't put too many bonuses. Sometimes people really load them up. They're like, eh, 10 bonuses here. And then all that does really, you think you're doing people a favor with, with throwing in all these gifts, but really you're just making them feel overwhelmed and scared that they aren't gonna be able to do this program because it sounds like a lot of work. Because people wanna complete things. There's this completist mentality where they're like, I can't do all those things, not realizing that they don't have to do any of those bonuses, those are just extra. So keep that in mind, you don't wanna overwhelm people. And then sprinkled out through other parts of the page, you're gonna have you know, the uh, announcement of like, introducing my course, you know, that, that's higher up too, maybe just under the benefits section um, and use mockups. Mockups are like showing a picture of your program on a laptop computer or you speaking to a group, um, showing the coaching calls or people talking on Voxer to you, you know, having like an array, but not too much. Again, we don't want to overwhelm them. Just giving them something to visualize so that they feel it. They like have a physical sensation of your digital product or service as being um, something they can pick up off the shelf and purchase. So that's the, you know, that exciting feeling that you get when you're at the checkout in line and you see some amazing looking gum. <laughs> Show them your amazing looking gum and in a pretty mock-up and it, it just, yeah, it helps to make your program feel real and makes them want to buy it. So then you're going to have your bio, which talks about your experience. Maybe you went through this transformation and that's why you're equipped to tell it. So this is the part where you are establishing your um, authority. They're building, you're building trust with them because they know that you get it, um, that you've been there or that you have some special skill and experience that's going to help them with that exact problem, that exact thing that they're trying to work through. You happen to have like the perfect solutions because of your particular experience and show your face and especially if they're going to be interacting with you personally because um they don't want some faceless thing they want to know that they're talking to a person they're not just buying from a company or a web page they're buying from a person from you you also want to include testimonials and you don't, you can have a testimonial section. I don't like carousels because I have seen studies showing carousels don't work or they, I've also had the experience of carousels messing up your page where some are long. There's some long testimonials in a carousel and some short and the module actually grows or contracts depending on the size of the, the length of the copy that's inside of it. And that means as people scroll down your page, that carousel is still moving and getting bigger and shorter and people are trying to read a section below and it keeps shifting up or it's shifting down. I see this a lot actually on some of the Kajabi sites and some other um, landing page platforms. So if you're going to have a carousel, which I don't recommend, make sure it's not messing up the experience of the rest of the page. Um, but I'm a big fan of just big impactful banners, like with a solid color behind it and big old text, and maybe someone's face um, speaking to the exact thing that they were just blown away with from getting from your course and talking about the transformation. And it, it's also extremely helpful to have testimonials that talk about some piece and how great it is next to where you've described that piece. So if you're saying, you know, in six weeks, we are going to be able to get from here to here. And then you have a testimonial that says, I couldn't imagine that I would be able to do this in six weeks. And in fact, I saw huge results after week three. That's a super powerful testimonial and the placement is very, very important there. So sprinkle your testimonials throughout the page, maybe avoid doing carousels, but you know, it's okay if you use them, if they function well and people can pause them. 
they want to control them, or you can do like, you know, block of three, that kind of thing. Also very important, this is something people forget to do or don't think of doing, and I think it's so, so powerful, and that is having a who it's for and who it's not for. You want to make sure that the people that shouldn't take this course understand that they shouldn't take this course or that they shouldn't take this program. So if you have noticed that your audience splits into two types of people, the ones that are willing and ready to do the work and who listen and do what they're told and that's how they find results. And then there's the ones that are just too busy to do the work or don't wanna follow directions. You make sure you list those people in the who it's not for and you know in a kind way or maybe in a funny way or a way that fits with your personality, but make it clear for those people that they shouldn't be in this program. Um, because that's going to just make things better for everyone. <laughs> um, social proof. So testimonials are also like social proof, but social proof is sometimes it's like a variant of testimonials. And a lot of times you'll see people take a screenshot of like comments in a Facebook thread or in a Slack channel or whatever, and they'll put the visuals, the graphics there and show those. So um, those are helpful. I also think it's okay to not show the actual screenshot because and then sometimes you feel like you have to fuzz out someone's face or their name and then that's like a whole tricky thing. You can just type those things up and be like mm, comments from people in the Facebook group and just have some little paragraphs of copy. The, also the benefit there is for um, accessibility on your website. So if you have just a bunch of images, people with screen readers are not going to know what those images are saying unless you're like really good about filling out those alt tags with the actual text of what's written in the image. So think about accessibility as well. Also, side tip, when you're creating a course or program, think about accessibility there also. If you have video, it's great to include audio. Everybody in their mother is using Hello Audio these days. You can use that. Um, transcripts, written transcripts, People consume in different ways. Some people can't consume through video and they have to have it written. Some people can't consume through written and they have to have video. And there's others who like to learn from you throughout their day. And so sometimes they're listening on a walk and then they're watching a video while they're cooking and then they're reading you know, on the couch later that night. So creating ease in um, the experience of taking your program or course is going to be really great for pulling in more happy customers because you have a larger pool of types of learners to draw from. Then some people will put a guarantee on the bottom of their page. There's also, you know, an access period, like you get access to this course for one year. I recommend you do not ever say lifetime access. This is a legal nightmare. <laughs> and whose who's lifetime are we talking about here? The lifetime of each audience member? Your lifetime? The lifetime of your company? Sometimes you create a course and then it's obsolete and you've said you get it for life, but it's completely not working anymore. Or you've decided that company is you know, unethical and you don't want to support them anymore. And then what do you do? You promised access to this thing that you no longer feel good about supporting, just don't put yourself in that position. Give people a time limit or make it explicitly clear that this is going to last for as long as you feel it's relevant. Um, and that if it does close down like a month after they join, here's what's going to happen. Like you'll give them ability to download all the videos and all the assets, that kind of thing. And then I like to wrap up the page with an invitation for people to join and just another, sometimes I'll just call this module, you know, oh, stop, repeat the CTA. And it's just like the call to action, like, hey, come on in. I can't wait to help you if you're ready to make these next steps and to embrace this potential dreamy future reality. Here's a button. Go ahead and sign up. Um, I completely forgot to mention pricing. So <laughs> somewhere on your page, <laughs> preferably up real high. Put the price, don't hide it. Don't don't hide it. I mean, I guess there's maybe some occasions where it's you want to hide it till people talk to you, but I just I don't I just don't like that personally. So this is my personal recommendation is show people the price. It's a better experience for everyone. They aren't embarrassed or like feeling uncomfortably pushed into a corner that they have to talk to you and then on the phone you're gonna tell them what the price is and they're gonna they're gonna maybe get strong armed into purchasing just 
make it easy for them to see the cost and what's included in the payment plans. And yeah, I have more thoughts about payment plans and uh, inclusivity and that'll be for another video, but make it clear and don't give too many choices. A lot of times you'll see people with like the three column layout of, you know, tier one, tier two, tier three, and little check marks for all the things, uh, five things here, everything from option one, plus these five things and everything from the other two options, plus these 10 things. That's a great layout if you are a SaaS company, if you're a software as a service or you have an application or you're GoDaddy or you're a cell phone company and you're saying, you know, this includes these features, but not so much if you're a course creator or a coach, you're going to want to have simplified pricing, preferably give them one choice. That choice is, are you buying or are you not? And then you can give them an idea that, oh, there's a payment plan. Um, you could even have two buttons, but if it's possible, tell them this is the price payment plans available. And then they're like, yeah, I want to do it. They click on it. They get to your cart page and then you can explain the payment breakdown. Um, maybe throw in another testimonial and then they purchase from there. Whew. So that was a lot. Hopefully <laughs> you're not overwhelmed. Um, but you know, if you are, you know where to find me. Head over to saradesign.com and I am happy to work with you. And um, yeah, there'll be more, many more videos to come about this topic. So if you have any specific questions, platforms, other tips and techniques, um, definitely leave a comment. Thanks.